You're listening to the LA Football Podcast. What's going on, Los Angeles? And welcome back to the LA Football Show here on the LA Football Network, live on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. I'm your co-host, Ryan Diver, joined as always by the madman, Jamal Madney. Excited to get into all of our LA teams pro football. We are a less than a week away from the new league year starting college football. We already have spring practices beginning. So football, you know, in the NFL never really ends, but even in college is, is back as well. So we got plenty to talk about. We're going to start segment one. And if you're on podcast with our Rams, because per usual, they are have the most headlines in the news that we want to get into. So, but Jamal, my man, happy uh, Friday. How are we doing? How's the week been? Welcome home. Doing well, Ryan. Excited to be home and excited about the weekend. Um, uh, me and the wife are going to uh, Newport Beach here for the weekend and, and celebrate our third wedding anniversary. Hard to believe we've been married three years. We got married five days before the pandemic and everything shut down. And so we were able to squeeze it in. As you would like to say, Ryan, in classic Jamal fashion, I waited till the last minute and still everything worked out, even with my wedding. So Excited about heading out to Newport here in, in just a little bit, but so thrilled to be recording with you. It's just the perfect way to segue into the weekend. Yeah, yeah, it, it, classic Jamal fashion, and somehow it always works out for you. So happy, <laughs> uh, obviously. That was a big one. And, um, you know, obviously our, our daughter, everyone knows that, that she was born right at the beginning of the pandemic too. So very closely tied in that. And that was obviously before we met, but now, um, you know, our families are, are very, very close. So intertwined there forever and always. Show is always brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Head to betonline.ag today. Use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. Gets you a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Plenty of great stuff to bet on. Um, it's crazy. NBA and NHL playoffs are just around the corner. Um, tougher to bet on for me, but I've, I've have won some money before. Um, my avalanche making a push. You're playing the Kings on, on tonight as we're recording this. So a nice LA playoff potential matchup. And then you have obviously uh, basketball and the Lakers as they kind of, and Clippers both as they're trying to keep their playoff hopes alive uh, down the stretch. You can do it all bet online that AG promo code, believe tell them the guys at the LA football network sent you. So Jamal, anything you want to say before we dive into this? Because it was it was a very wild Thursday in terms of roller coasterness of Rams news, which we'll get into. But anything you want to get off your chest before we dive into it? No, Ryan, I'm excited to to jump into it here. And the one thing I'll say is it it seems like it's a roller coaster from the outside. But if you've <laughs> been following the LA Football Show, we've been kind of guiding this thing like a GPS navigation system. Pretty spot on. I think nothing the Rams have done over the last few days, over the last few weeks, has really surprised either you or me when you can mm-hmm. kind of zoom out and understand the larger strategy. So I'm, I'm excited to jump into it. Yeah, it is. You know, obviously, I, I like to think we, we know what we're doing, know what we're talking about. But it, it's been pretty wild how, you know, we've been kind of just it's like one of those uh, books you read that you like choose your destiny at the end. And everything we do that that just happens in real life, it comes to fruition. So, um, but for those that don't know, this morning or Thursday morning, Michael Lombardi. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna say something. I'm in a second, but I'll just say this first. Michael Lombardi on the Pat McAfee show comes out and explicitly, not like even between reading between the lines, says, "I know for a fact the Rams have been making phone calls and trying to trade Matthew Stafford." Like he did not sugarcoat it. Everyone freaked out, like, okay, we're losing. We're going to get rid of Ramsey. We're going to get rid of Floyd. We're going to get a Robinson. And now Stafford. Well, then Les Snead had his presser a few hours later and basically put that to bed real quick, saying, you know, Stafford is, we're going to lean on Stafford during this um, refurbish, as I like to call it, and use him. And that's why he's here. So, first off, what did you think? I, I'm going to be honest. Like, I was so busy this morning. I didn't even hear the, the Lombardi thing. So, when I heard the, Less neat thing. I was like, oh, yeah, that's what we said all along. And then I was like, oh, wait, I missed this four hours of just chaos. So if you heard it, maybe you were too busy too, but what did you hear if you did? Or what did you think if you did uh, when Lombardi dropped that fake bomb, if you will? Yeah, it was the fake bomb, Ryan, for sure. Obviously, it, it catches you off guard at the beginning. But I think the one thing I will say is 
both things can be true. You know, we, we sort of always live in this world where one thing has to be true and the other has to be false and somebody's got to be right when someone else is wrong. And that's just sort of systemic in our society, it seems today. But I think both things can be true. And it kind of goes hand in hand to what you and I have been talking about the last few days, that this is this 2023 season is you're, you're trying to rebuild on the fly with your core of Stafford, Cup and Donald. You want to try and get value around them. It's a very weak NFC. And you're going to try and make a push and see if lightning can strike. If some of these young guys really emerge into stars, then you add on and you're back in 24. If 23 kind of goes bust, then absolutely. I think at the end of this time next year, both Stafford and Donald are going to be on the trading block. And this is how the Rams are going to be able to minimize the, the remodel to get back into contention, as you and I talked about, with this goal of being at or near the Super Bowl every three years. Now, having said all of that, if you are kind of just testing the waters for a Matthew Stafford and a couple of ones come back or there's just a haul of picks that come back, you have to stop and take a listen there. And you have to sort of Mm -hmm. test that with your strategy of what you want to do because there's potentially a path there where you do start over at the quarterback position in 23, and then you're in square in the Caleb Williams sweepstakes, which what you and I have talked about for the better part of six months now, that would be the grand slam scenario for the Rams, not only on the field, but also off the field to be able to finally close that loop of truly being LA's team and thought of in the same ilk that you would with the Lakers and the Dodgers. So my initial Mm -hmm. reaction was, wow, it was kind of a bold thing that Lombardi said. But when you take a step back, I think both Lombardi and Lesney can be truthful in this situation. And I actually believe they both are truthful to a certain extent. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, And the thing that, we'll never know unless we like down with these guys individually is because I have heard and read and other people have reported that the, the Rams have received calls on nine players uh, is what Lesney said in his press conference. And there were reports even in the combine that we heard that people were asking about Stafford. So the question is, was Snead reaching out or was he being reached out to? Cause you'd be, you'd be a terrible GM if you didn't at least like listen to offers. So I, I have zero gripe with that. At all. I mean, you have like you just everything you laid out, like you have to do you see like if someone's like, hey, we'll give you three first for Stafford. It's like, OK, <laughs> like we love the guy, but he's 35 years old. Like, all right, we'll take that. Um, the thing that threw me off with what Lombardi said is that they were not just making phone calls, but outwardly wanting to trade him and shed him off the roster is the way he said it kind of. So um, which when you do the numbers, the dead money, it would never make it. It was like 74 million in dead money or something. So it wouldn't have worked anyway. Um, And, you know, I have no problem with Lombardi. I never, we on the show don't talk ilk about anyone, but more often than not, he seems like he's, he's making things up a lot of, or at least like just has bad sources a lot of times. So I don't take a lot of what he says uh, to heart anyway. Um, You know, it's one of those, I think because he has the NFL pedigree, and was a GM in the league, was an executive in the league, has worked for NFL Network, people just automatically are like, yeah, you're right. You know what you're talking about. And you and I both know, Jamal, in any business, in any industry, and I'm not saying this specifically about him, but a lot of people can get jobs in industries that aren't necessarily fit to do those jobs. And, you know, he may be one of those. So (laughs) anyway, that's all I'll say about that. But yeah, to your point, it would be silly of Snead not to at least listen to conversations, but I'm glad that he came out today and basically said, this is what we're doing moving forward. And it was interesting that, you know, we knew this, we called this, I mean, you said it, what, two weeks ago, interesting that he said specifically, we'll lean on Stafford and our other pillars are Donald and cup and definitely did not say Jalen Ramsey. So that I think puts it firmly in the know that Jalen Ramsey will not be on this Ram squad. You know, beginning of 2023 season. No, no doubt, Ryan. I think these are your three pillars and, when you look at who they are and what they represent and the value that they bring, I think it's a no brainer. I think when you look at like you and I have talked about the state of the quarterback position in the NFL, a 35 year old Matt Stafford coming off of neck injuries, spinal injuries, concussions is still a top seven, top eight quarterback in the league. 
given just who else is out there by default. And so you have a top eight guy. You're not going to get equal value for him this year. So obviously he's going to be a pillar. You look at Aaron Donald, you're talking about the most dominant defensive player, not only of the last 10 years, but one of the two or three most dominant defensive players of the last 40 years. And he's still got some things in the tank here. And he's coming off of an injury prone season. He's coming off of a year was the first time he didn't make all pro since his rookie year. So he's coming back Mm -hmm. with a chip on his shoulder to show that, look, my career is not going to be like J.J. Watt, where after I won the three defensive players of the year, injuries took over, age took over. I was never the same again. That was just a blip in the radar. I got a lot more in the tank. And when Aaron Donald reaches an Aaron Donald level, no one can match that. So obviously you're not going to get equal value back for AD this year. And then when you look at Cooper Cup, as long as he's healthy, you're talking about, for my money, still the best receiver in football. We just have a very short memory. So those three guys are pillars for a reason because you're not going to yep. get equal value for them back in 23. Everybody else on this roster, you can, and including Jalen Ramsey. For the right picks, for the right free agents, you can get a guy who's just as good as Jalen Ramsey at this point in his career. And so you want to build around that core and you want to get lean elsewhere, you want to get hungry elsewhere, and let's see where the chips fall in a world where Jalen Hurts is the best quarterback in the NFC right now, and you got Stafford as the guy, as the only one that's won a ring in the NFC, let's roll the dice and see what happens. You get to 9-8, and you get into the playoffs, anything can happen, and then you decide your 2024 strategy from there. So, Makes perfect sense to me, Ryan. This is a perfect sort of rebuild on the fly, remodel, refurbish, uh, re, re-accelerate almost in terms of getting back to championship contention. So everything that they're doing makes a lot of sense to me. And I will say one thing, Les Snead has had such a better 2023 already than he had as a 2022. And he's already sort of outperforming his 2022 in a significant way. And I'm very excited about the future of the Rams. I think to that point, it seems like at least since they've been in LA that less need almost shines when it's looks so bleak, right? Like when everyone's talking about the Rams have no cap space, they have bad contracts. um, They're, they're old at their star positions. They have no draft picks, whatever you want to say. That seems to be when he shines. It's like, all right, it's kind of like that scene in draft day with Kevin Costner. Like, like, ah, oh, you know, I love this job. Blah blah blah. Like, you go down the list. And last year, it seemed like, okay, we just won. You know, I don't really have to re-sign any big names because we already did that. Like, he almost like he, he's like, I need to make noise. Like, what do I do to make noise here? And then obviously the Von Miller thing uh, didn't happen, and it's almost like made some panic moves there after that. But I think he just shines when he's his back's against the wall, which he's done so far this year. Did you see um, Colin Cowherd released his top NFC quarterbacks? Like, a, I, I, you probably talked about him on a show, but there was like a graphic going around. Did you see that by chance? I saw the graphic. I saw the graphic. It may be worthwhile to sort of share with our, our listeners kind of who's on the list and what the order is. So, yeah, I mean, so Cowherd, no matter what, whatever anyone thinks about him, um, but he's – I. I I mean, I, I enjoy it, but it seems like since he's been now in LA, he's kind of become an LA homer to an extent, like yeah, diehard sure. USC fan. And yeah. he like, <laughs> seems like a Rams fan, but he had, he put Stafford at one in the NFC, which, you know, we've been flirting with for ever since the news about uh, Brady retiring and Rogers most likely. And now it's looking very likely going to an AFC team. We've been saying that for quite some time. And a lot of people, especially when we were out on in Phoenix and Super Bowl, like just scoffed at it. And again, I'm not saying, Colin Coward's the the end all be all authority of what makes a great quarterback, but it was kind of nice to see someone else in the media, the tie up ranking, putting uh, Stafford at one, and I think he had Jalen Hurts two. Um, did he have Dak three and then Kyler four, or maybe had, yeah, so, yeah, something like that. I think, um, but yeah, Stafford won. So I mean, again, we've been saying that he's the only one with the ring. If he's healthy, he's still got a, a cannon arm. Mobility wise, yes, he's not nearly as mobile or athletic as a Jalen Hurts. But if you're going purely passing statistics, not even statistics, but passing deep ball accuracy, you know, the the no-look passes that everyone's enamored with, like, I like Jalen Hurts a lot, but Stafford's better at all of those things, even at his age of 35. So I don't think it's out of the realm of craziness that Stafford's best in the NFC right now, which is good for no, the Rams. I, I, 
I, I totally agree with you, Ryan. And that's why you have to be very mindful of how you are retooling this team. Because at the end of the day, the most important position in the sport by far, you have arguably the best player in your conference. So by default, you're not going to be in a full-on rebuild. That's just foolish. And yeah. then when you add to that, hey, the other end, two points make a line. The other point that makes this line is arguably the best receiver in football, or at the very least, top three. So you have one of the most elite quarterback-to-receiver connections in the game, if not the most elite, uh, in terms of both ends of that line. And then you throw in what you can get with an Aaron Donald defensively. You have the bones of what you need to be able to compete. You get into the playoffs. Anything can happen at that point. You look at the state of teams like Dallas, who does not believe in Dak, and now lost Kellen Moore. You look at the state of the Niners, who seemingly have talent at every position except for the one position that matters. <laughs> you look at you look at Minnesota. Does anyone really believe in Kirk Cousins? I mean, at this point, if you believe in Kirk Cousins, you just like you know to beat yourself up. You're just sort of a masochist at this point. You go on and on the list. There's really nobody in the NFC. This is the weakest I've seen the NFC in a very long time. Aaron Rodgers is either going to be in some underground cave for the next six months, meditating, having a lot of candles, some seances, or he's going to be quarterbacking the Jets, which you could argue are the same thing. I just described the same activities. <laughs> um, and so when yeah. you look at the state of the NFC, um, you would be foolish not to at least attempt a run at this thing, given that you are very strong at the elite positions. Well, and – I did this last episode in a way, and I don't want to. It's not fair to truly compare them because Pat Mahomes is out of this world. But you look at the Chiefs and kind of what they did over after they lost that Super Bowl to the Buccaneers. And you kind of, if you really look at it, first of all, I, what I separate is they've drafted really well. So that's that's one big thing. Uh, they've done really well in the draft, which the Rams have been up and down. They need to hit this draft. But you look at they have three core guys like the Rams. They have Pat Mahomes, who's obviously, we're not dumb. He's better than Matthew Stafford. But Pat Mahomes, you have Travis Kelsey, and then you have Chris Jones on the defense. That's their core three, and they have a lot of – and then obviously what they did with that core three then is absolutely fortify the offensive line, and then they drafted well in the secondary. I mean, their secondary was all young guys. Either rookie – it was I think it was the youngest secondary in football, and they performed yep. fairly well when they had to. So if the Rams now – offloading some of these big name guys. We don't need to go back into them. We, we spent, if you haven't heard, we spent 40 minutes on the last episode. Check that out about those big three. Uh, they just got their comp picks officially today. Four comp picks. They got three fives and a seven. So I know those are later, but still that gets at 10 draft picks. So fortify your offensive line in the draft because you can't spend a whole lot on free agency. If you can potentially restructure cup to get a little bit, a little bit cap flexibility you can sign a few guys in free agency at least some some vet presences to early term deals and yeah you're right back in it in this week nfc and there's no reason you can't win nine ten games get to the dance anything's possible and go on a run and then like we said though this then that sets you up for 2024 through 2025 or six because with these moves of ramsey uh leonard floyd bobby wagner and uh, alan robinson doesn't free up a ton of cap this year, but it does free up a lot of cap for 2024. So if you can be competitive this year, get to the dance, see what happens, but then you're really set up nicely for 2024 and beyond. Like a three-year window there where you have all your draft picks again. You can go all in again, push the chips all in again in 2024 and see what happens then. So, you know, we don't need to keep betting a dead horse, but I just think they're doing things really masterfully so far this offseason. Now we'll see what they do come March 15th when the league year starts. But it's starting good already, and now we'll see what happens when they can actually put you know ink to paper with some signings or bringing guys back or officially moving on from those big names that we've been talking about. So hats off to Snead and Co. Uh, for what they're doing, and you know it always keeps it interesting for us us to cover the Rams. Absolutely, Ryan. And when you sort of break down even the division, right, and you look at Stafford, Geno, TBD. OK, <laughs> you know, because we don't know what's what's happening with the Niners and then Kyler Murray. I mean, this is really sort of the four that you're going in with. And, and a first time head coach. I love Geno Smith, but I, I think you and I have both talked about at nauseum that I think replicating a full season and season over season 
I think is going to be very challenging for him and for that roster. When you look at Kyler now, new coaching staff, he's already being questioned by members of his offensive line, senior leaders on the team about his level of maturity, his level of leadership. You wonder how much of the locker room he's got in addition to all of his durability concerns, given his size. I mean, this is a cataclysmic gap between sort of the best quarterback in the division right now and everybody else at this point. I mean, the gap between Stafford and the next best quarterback in the NFC West is greater significantly than the gap between Patrick Mahomes and the next best quarterback in the AFC West. I mean, think about that for a second. So the Rams just at the most important position, you got to think are going to be right there in this division. Now the Niners have a great overall roster, so they're probably the favorites as it stands right now to win that division, but it's going to be tooth and nail with the Rams. And I think what a, what a luxury to be in a situation here, Ryan, where your rebuilding years and air quotes are years where you're still contending for the division. You're going to get into the playoffs and see what happens. I mean, if that's the floor of your franchise, you are one of the best franchises in the NFL and we should all be privileged. Yeah. Of course we're out of time. So I'll end with this, but Everything we've been talking about, and it sounds so strange to say this, considering they're going to be moving on from four key players of this team. And yet I feel much better about this team heading into 2023 than I did last year after winning the Super Bowl heading into 2022. And I was obviously much more optimistic than even you were. Um, but I truly do feel better right now than I did this time last year. Uh, and it's just because I think these are smart, smart moves. And the NFC also is just that much worse. So um, big things. We'll have a lot to talk about next week. That's all the time we have for this Ram segment. We've got to take a break on radio. Uh, so keep it right here. We'll be back at the bottom of the hour. Podcasts, we'll talk to you all next week. You're listening to the L.A. Football Podcast.